RBC family, welcome to Online Church. Um, we hope you're enjoying seeing some familiar faces as we set aside some time to gather together um, in this new way to honour our God. This week, um, as I've been talking to friends and family, I've noticed a real theme of positivity um, around what we do have during this time. And this has been everything from essentials and food uh, to time, time to slow down and do activities like read or garden, um, or even just appreciate, appreciating the fact that we can self-isolate, that we have space and we have homes and we have running water. Um, when we stop to think about it, we really are so blessed. There is so much that God provides for us, even in troubled times. It reminded me of a verse in James chapter one, actually of verses two to four, which I'll read now. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. You know, it's during times of trouble that we have the opportunity to press into God, to acknowledge his goodness and to persevere. And we see his faithfulness in so many different ways. And, you know, just just considering um, being thankful in times of troubles, it's a strange concept, but there's such a truth to it. You know, there are reasons why we can overcome troubles with Christ in our life. Um, so maybe this week we can each take some time to list the things that we are grateful for in these circumstances, list the reasons why we can be joyful in these troubled times, and um, really be thankful that God is with us in every moment. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the word and the wisdom that we find in it. We ask, Lord, that you help us to remember that we can find joy in troubled times, that you are faithful, that you provide everything that we need um, and more. And we are so blessed yeah, just to have you with us through everything. We ask, Lord, that as we set this time aside to worship and honour you, that your presence will come into our midst, into each and every home as we gather around Rockingham, and that we will feel your spirit strong um, with every member of the church family that is watching this online service. Um, thank you, Lord, that you are with us always, and bless this day and bless this service. In your name we pray. Amen. And now our worship team is going to lead us in some worship. So let's enjoy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy. There is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
worthy of every song we could ever sing and worthy of all the praise we could ever bring and worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. And Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like. There is no beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. And holy, there is no one like you. There is no beside.
not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. Yes, I am who you say I am. The sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. God, I thank you so much that you've given us this ability to worship you in spirit and in truth alongside my brothers and sisters in, in Jesus and even though we're not standing next to each other physically God but we are standing with each other as we come before your your throne and offer you worship God we just thank you we just love you we pray that you will continue to reveal yourself to each of us through this season through this season where we're where we're at home but God it gives us actually probably more time to pray and more time to get stuck into your word so God we just invite you to reveal yourself to us through this message but also through our own personal devotion to you God we thank you and we love you and we pray that you'll bless our time together in Jesus mighty name amen thank you church I'm going to hand over to Chris for some notices. Thanks, Matt. And hi, everyone. It's great to connect with you again uh, in our online environment. I've just got a few notices for you today. So hopefully um, if you've got a pen and paper or um, any way to note these down to remind yourself during the week, that'd be great. We have a Sunday prayer um, session every week from 11 o'clock. And uh, this is our prayer service online through our Zoom links. So if you uh, have seen those links on your Facebook page or on our update email that comes out regularly, um, just click on that link and you can pray with us. You can see those that are participating in the prayer service and it's a great time to connect and pray together. Also on Wednesday, uh, we'll, as you've seen on Facebook, um, Pastor Steve will be bringing us the Wednesday word. Uh, and this is a great time to connect with everyone as well and just to hear what's happening and be encouraged. Also Wednesday night, our church family are getting together from 7.30 to 8.30 to pray. And that is um, any time that you can make yourself available during that hour, even if it's 10 minutes, half an hour or the whole hour, know that uh, your church family will be praying together in our homes, just um, on our own, but we'll be praying for the needs um, that have been put in by the prayer basket or those needs, uh, prayer requests that we've put on uh, Facebook. So uh, use those prayer points just to come to the Lord and know that you're joining with your church family together in prayer. To make things really easy for you, um, we've put everything that you need on our front page of our website. So if you go to rockingham.org.au uh, or Rockingham Baptist Church, you'll be able to see everything there for you, all of our videos, all of our podcasts, uh, our email addresses for you to get in contact with us and also ways that you can uh, keep giving. Um, and I'd encourage you at this time, if you are um, experiencing financial need, let us know so we can pray for you. Um, but if you're not and you can continue to give, then we ask that you prayerfully consider giving generously at this time. Also, if you have any prayer requests, any needs or any testimonies or anything that you would like to contact the staff about, please don't hesitate to use our prayer at rockingham.org.au. 
uh, email address and uh, we will pray for you. And this is a great way that we can keep in touch with all of you. Lastly, I'd like to encourage you that if you have uh, heard of any acts of kindness, any um, encouragement, any testimonies at all, let us know so that we can encourage each other with these um, positive and wonderful blessings at this time. Okay, I'd just like to pray and then we're going to read some scripture together. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for your presence with us, for just your grace and your mercy at this time, Lord. Even as we are separated, we thank you for these ways that we can continue to connect together. And Lord, as we uh, pray for our giving right now, I pray that you will multiply it and that you will bless each giver. Lord, that you will um, just provide for those that are struggling at this time financially. And Lord, in every way that you will make your grace sufficient for each one of us as you've promised. We thank you, Lord. And as Pastor Steve is going to bring the word shortly, I just pray your blessing on the words that you have given him to speak. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, before Pastor Steve comes to bring the word, um, he's asked us to read um, two passages in Revelation. So I encourage you to grab your Bibles and um, join along with me as I read those. It's coming from Revelation 4 and Revelation 5. Revelation 4. After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven. And the voice I had first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian. A rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the th throne came thrashes, flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the centre around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a face like a man. The fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around even under his wings. Day and night, they never stop saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honour and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord our God, and God, to receive glory and honour and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Revelation 5. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the centre of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and the elders. He had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He came and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the four 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each one had a harp 
and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom and priests to serve our God and they will reign on the earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them singing, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. The four living creatures said, Amen, and they and the elders fell down and worshipped. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our weekend service. Before we get into the Lamb's War, I just wanted to talk a little bit about 10 Bridges to Online Church. And if you missed our Wednesday word, I think these are important because as we move into the future, we're not sure how much longer we're going to be in this situation of doing church from home. We want to encourage you to stay true, to, to commit to the videos, to commit to the church and, and not to fall away that each weekend you will take time out to do church with your family and, and be connected to the wider community. So we've put together 10 bridges that we believe will help us with online church. And here they are here. And you will, you will see them on the Wednesday Word. If you go back to that video, that'll help you. But we have the weekend video, RBC Kids that will go alongside weekend with video. We have Youth Online, Zoom Prayer, Wednesday Word, Wednesday Prayer, an ability to contact us. We have daily prayer, pastoral care, and, and God's mission is the same. We, we, we're about being a witness to the world. So we want to encourage you to commit to the, to the church and commit to the fellowship and, and consider how you can get involved in this online church. All right, with that said, we're going to go into the Lamb's War. And the Lamb's War. And here it is here. And I want to start. Jesus is a lamb slain who defeated the Satan, the mighty Satan. He defeated Satan as a lamb. And he's portrayed as a lamb. A lamb won the fight. It's not an image of your typical world leader or your alpha male. This is Jesus, the lamb who was slain, who has taken control of the whole of creation. And what we know so far in Revelation, in a coded way, it describes the war between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. John was in prison. The church was being persecuted. The book is symbolic. It's full of imagery, like a movie showing the battle between Jesus and his enemies. And we talked about those enemies, the Australian plagues in week one. Even though it may seem difficult to read, we already know the story. Jesus has won. And so as we read the book, we read it with this understanding. And it always comes back to Jesus has won. The book reveals the fullness of Jesus so as to comfort and encourage and exhort us to be strengthened in faith in life's challenges, fearful events and persecution. So it's irrelevant to every church in every generation from day one to the time when Jesus returns. So last week we recognised the seven churches. We were each going through various per trials and persecutions. They were turning from their faith. There was idolatry. And it said, it's even said that Antipas, a faithful witness in the church of Pergamum, um, he was burnt alive in a hollow bull-shaped altar because he would not bow down to other gods. He remained true to his faith. And Revelation is this account of trying to encourage us in the midst of difficulty, challenges, strife, whatever may come our way, that we remain true to our faith. Jesus and the apostles were aware of being in conflict more than anyone else. You know, this war began when, when God kicked Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden, and will only end when Jesus comes and returns on that last day. We also said last week there are two things to remember through this book. Number one is, first, it's a, it's a call to enter into serving our Father in heaven, to know our Father more. The more we know Jesus, the more we know the Father, Revelation 1.6. And second, this book is written to the church. It's written to us. It's written to everyday people in everyday lives in an everyday world. So it can be relevant and it can be encouraging and uplifting as we move through it. 
Revelation is made up of eight successive parallel accounts speaking from the time of Jesus' first coming to the time of his second coming. And the first account, and just a recap from last week, we found John, first of all, he, he, first of all, he describes Jesus in a way that he is the sacrificial king who will return one day on the clouds. Every eye will see him. He then goes on to write what he views. He sees Jesus walking in the midst of the lampstands. It's this imagery of the Old Testament and the temple and, and the kings. And, and so Jesus is tending to the, the, to the lampstands. And, and in a coded way, what it's saying to us is that Jesus is amongst us. He's amongst the churches and he's trying to commend them and comfort them and correct them and so that they'll be strengthened in faith. Um, which leads to chapter 2 and chapter 3, which is just about the seven churches to be encouraged. And what we find in the seven churches, this is what they're told. Listen, repent, and be victorious. Stay victorious. Listen, repent, and be victorious. So this is the chapter 1 to 3. This is the sort of the opening scene. It's Jesus is amongst his churches trying to strengthen them in faith in the midst of danger so that they will be victorious at the end. And they will do this by repenting, opening their eyes, seeing and remaining true to their faith. And so this is the foundation for the whole of the book. This is the foundation for all that's going to take place. So every time we read a scene, we come back to this idea of let's repent, let's open our eyes and let's remain victorious in the midst of whatever we may be challenged by. So that was scene one. Now we're into scene two, chapter four. And so after the seven churches, John is taken in the spirit. Uh, we're not sure by what that means. He, he had a vision, a dream. He's taken in the spirit and he finds himself in heaven in the very throne room of God. Absolutely amazing. He's in this throne room. It's filled with angels and elders praising God. The scene is soaked with the majesty and holiness of God, uh, with angels and elders day and night praising God. We read that in, in verses 6 and 7 of chapter 4. And I, just want to, I just want to read that to you again. I know that we've read it out online as, as Christine has read it to us. But we find this in verse 6 and 7. Let's read it again. Um, 5, 6. Also in front of the throne there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the centre around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in the front and back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second was like an ox, the third like a man, and the fourth like, a, like an eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under its wings. And day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, 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 day and night, praising the Lord. And so this is the throne room, and this is where John finds himself. And so, let me take you to that verse. So the elders and the and the angels are praising God. This is in the war room, in the throne room, where the divine council, where God makes decisions, where God has put into place his plan. And Revelation 4, 8 says, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And then a little bit further down in verse 12, it says, You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honour and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created. The prophet Isaiah experienced the same vision. He had the same similar experience as John is having here. And what he wrote when, when he came into the throne room, we see in Isaiah chapter 6, he said, Woe, woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. I live among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. So in the presence of God, um, Isaiah understood the sinfulness of his own life compared to the perfection of God in the throne room. And like Isaiah, I believe that the th in the throne room experience, it causes the Apostle John to respond in a similar way. In that moment, he saw there was an unbridgeable gap, and a chasm so deep, big, so deep between God and the sin of humanity that it could never be bridged. And his heart becomes heavy. Yet at this moment, he does not see that he is in the presence of the Holy Spirit, described as the seven spirits in Revelation 4-5. In this moment, he's in the presence of the angels, described with the faces of a lion, a calf, a man, an eagle. This is the character of Jesus. This is speaking of Jesus' kingdom. He is the lion, the sacrifice, the calf, the humanness of the man. And the eagle displays his divinity. It shows his divinity. And they're full of eyes, which means he's all-knowing and all-seeing. 
So, and then there are the 24 elders on the 24 thrones. Now, this isn't hard to understand because Jesus taught about this in Matthew 19. In Matthew 19, he says, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, at the end of the time, when the Son of Man sits on the glorious throne, you have followed me, will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. He's speaking to the disciples. He's speaking to believers. He's saying, you guys are going to be the guys on the twelve thrones at the day of renewal, at the end of the, end of the when I come back, when I return. And so what we see here is, John is in the presence, he's in the presence of the Holy Spirit, he's in the presence of angels, he's in the presence of faithful believers. Yet, in this moment, John does not see the Lamb who was slain. There is a heaviness that comes upon him, comes a dread almost. The funny thing is, you, you would think the outcome of chapter 4 would be John worshipping. He would be worshipping with the Holy Spirit and the angels and the faithful believers, the elders, as they stand around the throne worshipping this God, holy, holy, holy. You think John would be drawn into worship. But no, he weeps. He wept and he wept. Chapter 5, verse 4. He believes no one can open the scroll, which is the plan of God's salvation. Let's read that, chapter 5. Just so you've got your Bibles here, let's just go to chapter 5. It won't be up on the screen. And we're going to read from verse, where did he weep and weep? We'll read from verse 3. And, but no one in heaven on earth or under earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and I wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then the one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and its seven seals. So what we find here is that this heaviness that had come upon John, understanding the bridge between humanity, a sinful humanity, and a holy God, that there was no one who could open the scroll, no one who could put into place God's plan. And then all of a sudden, one of the elders comes up, taps him on the shoulder, says, look, there's the lamb that was slain. And then John saw something changed. John saw. John saw a lamb slain. And the message to the seven churches comes flooding back. Open your eyes, repent and be victorious. John sees the salvation of the world in this moment. The words he had written maybe 10 years earlier, you know, John 3.16 come flooding back. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son, whoever shall believe upon him shall not perish but have eternal life. And in this moment, John's heaviness, this weeping, turns to joy as he understands he sees the lamb slain. He sees Jesus take the scroll. The vision erupts as Jesus becomes the center of worship and praise. And now what John sees, he sees the worship. He's in the presence of worship. Revelation 9, we find John now sees four living creatures and the elders of the church singing a new song. They're singing a new song to the Lord. You are worthy to take the scroll. Oh, let me get, bring that up. It says, you are worthy to take the scroll to open its seals because you were slain. And with your blood you purchased for God persons from every tribe and languages and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of priests to serve our God and they will reign on earth. And this is a new song. The four living creatures who are the character of Jesus, the elders of the church who are the faithful believers, are now singing this new song about the lamb who was slain, who puts into place the plan of God. Not only this, the next thing he sees is there's millions of angels. It tells us in verse 11, 5.11, it's worth reading. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands, ten thousands times ten thousands. We're talking about millions and millions of angels are praising, encircling the throne, in praising God. In verse 12, worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honour and glory and praise. And so the first circle, we have the, the, the character of, of Jesus by these angels with the faces of the lion and the goat or the calf and the, and the man and the eagle and the, and the elders around the throne. The next circle, the next circle is this millions and millions of angels. And then he sees all of creation and all believers praising God in verse 13. It says, Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and on the sea, and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb, to be praise, honour, glory, and worship. And we read this here. To him who sits on the throne, to the Lamb, be praise, and honour, and glory, and power forever and ever. And then it finishes with verse 14. 
The four living creatures, the angels said, Amen. And the elders, all the faithful believers, fell down and worshipped. And we all said, Amen. Amen. You know, the cross, this is the point. The cross is the definitive. It is the definitive revelation of God. The lamb slain is the definitive. It is the final revelation of God. We have repented and with eyes of faith, we see through the ugliness of the cross to reveal a loving Father. No wonder they're saying Amen. No wonder they're praising God. No wonder there are thousands upon thousands of angels, faithful believers, all of creation, praising God. Because the cross becomes the revelation of who Jesus is. To be strengthened in faith is to remain true to faith through challenges and hardships. You know, I was listening to 6PR this week and Andrew Gaze, a basketball legend, was asked on 6PR about the handling the pressures that will be faced with coronavirus. And he said, we have to sacrifice to get where we're going. You know, we're in a tunnel, but there's a light and we have to focus on the light at the end while we're in the tunnel. And I think, you know, as Christians, we can be taught to focus on the end of the tunnel without recognising we're in the tunnel. You know, God's going to do it. We're all okay. Everything works out. But we're in a tunnel. And right where you are, where you're sitting, where you're watching this video, you know, you're experiencing what you experience. Um, you're right in it. Uh, you might be concerned. You might have anxiety. Uh, and someone says, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Well, that might be so, but we still have to walk through the tunnel. The oxymoron is that I want to say that it will be okay. But the truth is, it is okay. It's not going to be okay. It is okay. In the midst of pain and challenge, it is okay. Because we are in the throne room with the living God, praising the glorious, holy, and awesome God that we serve. Open our eyes, repent, and do not turn away from Jesus in the mists of suffering and sacrifice because it is okay. That is the message of the Revelation, the book of Revelation. We are filled with hope because the purpose of life today can only be grasped by our vision of the end. We understand what we are going through today can be understood by what we know is going to happen in the future. Believers, keep your faith in God, our Father. You know, we, we're living in a time when people have no concern for their souls. If you know this morning that you must put your faith in Jesus and turn from your sinful ways, you must repent and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so I ask you in earnest, will you receive Christ as your Saviour? Will you receive Christ as your Saviour? Will you repent from your sinful ways? Will you recognise there is a battle between heaven and hell? Will you realise that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life? If that is you watching this video today, I'm going to ask you to say this prayer with me right now. If the Holy Spirit is just tugging at your heart and in your mind you're thinking, yes, I want to know Jesus, I want to repent today, say this prayer with me now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I recognise and admit that I am a sinner. I turn away from my sins, confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died and was raised from the dead for my salvation. I receive my salvation and all of its benefits right now. Lord, thank you for saving me this day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you made a commitment to follow Jesus, congratulations and welcome into the, the church life. Welcome to the church. We'd love for you to make contact with us. There, there's an email address at the bottom of the screen. If you could just write in to us, we can get back to you and share some information about the life of the church. Also, I just want to encourage you again, as this church we're going to be doing online for a while, I believe, and so we want to stay connected. And the 10 bridges to doing online church is a way that's going to help us to do that. And so we want to encourage you, don't shrink back or, you know, because it can be quite exhilarating to do it just for a couple of weeks, but this could take months. And so we want to encourage you to get involved, to, to be in short, pastorally looking out for one another. If God prompts you to call someone or make a, a, a message someone, please listen to the voice of the Spirit and let's do church together well. So this is church. We're going to say goodbye and I'm going to just close in prayer and we'll see you on Wednesday. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come together and to do church uh, through this platform. We know that we're not together in body, but we are together in spirit. And so, Father, as we meet in this way, may you continue to strengthen our faith as we go through the circumstances of life. Help us to be gentle, to be completely humble, to be patient, to bear with one another in love and to be one at this time. 
Lord, you are a great God and you take us into the throne room and we praise you, the holy, living, wonderful, awesome God. You are our God. We are your people. Um, Father, may you be with us as we go through this week and, uh, and we just give you all the honour and the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey Church, before you go, I thought I'd take this opportunity to introduce you to the newest baby Birch. Everyone, meet Micah Matthew Birch. He was born last night at uh, just before 8 o'clock. He's 50 centimetres long. He was 6 pounds, 6, 7, uh, 3.08 kilograms. For those of you who are interested I look forward to introducing him to you in person. Alright, have a great week everyone. Bye bye.